most basic explanation of what I'm planning to do is to simply go into the woods for quite a substantial period of time and drink water and not eat anything, um, build a little shelter to stay in. My name is Mike Alexander, 34 years old. I'm living here in Asheville, North Carolina. And I will be spending time still on every level, like activity, or like just physically not moving, you know, not eating. My intention is also to not be like thinking verbally, you know, if, if I can accomplish that. <laughs> why I would do such a thing. I've seen myself try so very hard over years and years to be a good person, to learn the right way to live, to, to figure it all out. And I guess I've done that long enough and seen myself go through the same cycles, you know, end up at the same spots of like having breakthroughs, having realizations and then similar frustrations coming up regardless of what I figure out. It's like my dad died when I was four. My mom and I, my life got stirred up so much and and there was no time to uh, like there's no time to recuperate like every you just got to move on you got to charge ahead in life. Well, part of me thinks he's crazy. Part of me admires the heck out of what he's doing. Part of me thinks he might be going into it in a naive manner, but then again, that's how we truly learn. So, overall, I think it's a very admirable thing to do, but I am a little uh, worried about him. Right now, uh we're looking around for a spot for me to settle down for a month, uh, thereabouts, we'll see. Looking for a flat spot that hopefully is uh, somewhat sheltered in case it storms. Uh, I'll be building a shelter too, so. I, I like this land out here a lot. I've spent some time hiking on it in the past when I've been house-sitting it out here. I think Mike's doing a really cool thing. And uh, I think he's going to figure out what it is that he really needs out of life. Most people think I have a death wish or I'm re being ridiculous. I think it's nuts. You know what? You can't go without eating, you know? And, well, is that true? If you suddenly stop eating and just take water, you're basically going to start breaking down too many of those fat cells with huge amounts of toxins stored in them all at once. And you're going to flood your body with a lot of toxins. And, and a lot of people get really psychotic, basically. You know, they have essentially hallucinations and, and all sorts of, uh, of reactions to, to that kind of fast that basically is not good. It's a ballsy thing to do. You're going to be out of the woods by yourself? You know, like, who are you going to talk to? I'm sure you'll start hallucinating. Me fasting now in this culture seems so strange to people. Hope he doesn't freak out and do something weird. <laughs> got to affect the psyche somehow, whether positive or whether negative. Uh, I could die. That's probably the worst thing I could think of happening, is uh, complete, utter death. That's right. It's my roof. It gets colder at night and uh, the wind kicks up. Maintaining body heat is crucial. We'll find out how well it works in the first storm. <laughs> <laughs> the main difference, I think, between just a normal like extended wilderness stay and this fast is, uh, for me, that I'm going to have a lot less energy to do things since I won't be eating. I have this nice little blanket slash sleeping bag liner. This is my uh, portable water filter. Just in case, a little snake bite kit. Knife, extra t-shirt, plenty of rope. A sleeping bag, really super absorbent, little chamois. A lot of this stuff I have just as a general like survival kit. Tiny little tissues. A pair of wool socks. 
some sunscreen, underwear. This is my little fire kit. Tingling in here. It's just like a little weather station. Some batteries for flashlights. I mean, I feel super prepared as far as emergency supplies go. A couple portable water containers. Uh, relative humidity. Medical kit. Barometric pressure. I got a set of tweezers. Mosquito netting. Nail clippers. Phase of the moon. And bacterial cream. Big, heavy uh, garbage bags. Different kind of bandages. And I got a hat too, just in case. This has just been a natural progression of my pursuit in life to, um, to understand why I'm here and what I'm doing and what's important to me and what it's going to take for me at the end of my life to look back and go like, this was, this was a good way to spend, spend a life. It's actually pretty sturdy, so, I mean, not if a tree would follow me, of course, but, uh, I might have to change locations. I don't know if this, this will last 30 days. I feel like this is the best thing I can do for myself. I feel like this is where my entire life has led to, like this here right now. It's almost like I'm like ready to hatch or, or like this is my time for, to be in a cocoon for some metamorphosis. You, there's all these things you got to do. You got to go to school, you got to get a job, you got to make a living, you got to like get the means together to acquire this or acquire that. Yeah, when do we have time for us? Top of broccoli, top of broccoli. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to drink this. I would have never, I mean, a year and a half ago, even considered like going and doing a fast for a month in the woods. A couple times a day, I am throwing all this stuff together into a glass of juice, if you can believe it. This will probably, this will be enough for two glasses, most likely. Research I did into it, just the overwhelming statistics on the uh, physiological benefits of fast at least a week long, if not a couple, couple weeks long. This is my lunch. This feels like, you know, the death of one life and the beginning of another. The year of my life has been nothing but stripping away. All these things that I've been clinging to. I'm just, I'm just very tired. <laughs> and this is, uh, it's time to rest. I'll have a lot of really great quiet time, a lot of time to reflect a lot of time to realize that he's also capable of meeting all of his needs. Turned away from myself even, you know, and that's the hardest thing about this process for me is, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really beautiful, you know, but it's like every single, single step on this journey is like recognizing and acknowledging and accepting like how much I've turned away from myself over the years. I feel pretty done with the life that I've lived. As a kid, I spent a lot of time sick and looking back on it like I, I was sick so much just to give myself a break. I just felt overwhelmed by life. I spent a good portion of growing up into my early adult life in various stages of depression. I would get exhausted just from living through the day. There's an endless supply of things that we're supposed to do. And so there's feeling all that pressure um, at the same time, feeling like I want nothing more than to get away from all that. This is it. I wonder what 
doing nothing is going to be. What, what do I actually need? That's the, you know, that's one of the questions, you know, not like, what do I want or think I need, you know, but when it comes down to it, what do I need? I would first say that I think it's pretty dangerous to his health um, and that my concern really wouldn't be so much for his fasting um, as for exposure. He could become hypothermic and especially if he gets wet. You get pulmonary edema, you can get um, uh, hyperkalemia, you can get rhythm disturbances, you can get a lot of things that are basically set you up for um, sudden death. longer he's there and the more I see the weather that we've been having, you know, the more worried I am. He's at elevation, he's getting drenched and from, you know, the thunderstorms and I would be really concerned about exposure risk and I would tell him that I'm not sure that it's such a good idea and that it would threaten his life. He's acclimating to nature. Um, and it's all about him. He's not working for anybody else or trying to please anybody else. And because of that, I think he's going to be able to focus on himself, which I'm guessing he may have a hard time doing when he's around others. I think the most dangerous thing right now is probably his mind. My concern would be his confusion and his ability to care for himself, uh, that he wouldn't understand what he was doing properly in the middle of the night, he'd be cold he'd get confused and he'd get himself into really a lot of trouble. So this is where I'll leave uh, little markers for you guys to uh, so you know that I'm okay. My intention is to not be verbal in any way. I definitely don't want to talk to anybody I've never done a fast this extensive, so I have no idea where my energy level is going to be or where my mental clarity is going to be. Oh, my hair just started getting natty and, and funky and uh, just, I tried washing it once in the stream and, you know, I, it just was easier to do without it, so I got, got rid of it. The benefit of just being out here with no other distractions has been to see that, like, I am my distraction. Like, my entire life that I've lived so far is coming to a close, and this is like the start of a new path for me. This is my life right now. As my outer strength kind of dwindles, like I'm finding my inner strength grow. 
all the source of confusion, all the sources of like frustration and struggle in my life, like I've just sat here long enough and it's just all become very clear. I guess I realize that like what we all do is, you know, we have these ideas of how things need to be and we try to our best to make things that way so that we're comfortable and relaxed enough, feel loved enough um, to be able to relax and let go. You know, if you don't breathe, if you don't take in air and then let air out, your system becomes toxic and you I'm die. I'm getting soaked. If I don't do something about that, I'm gonna die of hypothermia. I had so many clothes on Took my under temperature my rain actually gear, at one point. And then all eventually, in my head. like, the clothes inside the rain gear started if getting you don't damp. drink like water and, in moisture and then let water out, your system becomes toxic and you die. Moving in order to just Something maintain was enough body heat and to not uh, shiver to and fear that I was gonna not wake up if I went that to line sleep. Into starvation. Like, my body is totally fine and functional. I feel like it just knows what to do. It's really hard to let go. It's really hard to let go. It's just all in my head. Hope at this point that nothing is ever as I expect it to be. I basically get up to uh, fill my water and dump out my little pee jars and come back right here. <laughs> so my uh, nice like leaf roof, worthless. I mean, within hours of <laughs> settling in for this month long stay in the woods in this primitive shelter which I never built one before and I had no idea if it would hold up. The light, nice light rain, oh, that's kind of neat, you know? And then downpour and winds uh, that I later heard was were in the 50, 60 mile an hour range. Just lightning, trees dropping around me. And I was just laying there soaking wet, shaking, and I mean, it's just pouring, pouring, and the wind's whipping around like crazy, lightning, all this stuff. I just finally just got up out of my shelter and went out into the middle of the rain. It was just comical at that point. I mean, how, how more intense could it get? It just got to be funny. And I mean, just like the snap of a finger, everything got calm. But my whole state of being shifted instantly. And I was completely calm from that point on. Finally, after a couple days, you know, the sun came out and I got to air everything out. I had to rip off my roof. I can see why most people go to the desert to do this. Mosquitoes are brutal. Laying here and swatting a mosquito. Laying here and swatting a mosquito. In the first week, got like well over 100 mosquito bites. Yeah, the bug netting has been essential. I think that keeps the mice from running over my face at night. At next time, a place with no mosquitoes. Lay in here and swat a mosquito. There's something crawling on me right now. If I got mice running around my head all night, you know, while I'm wanting to sleep, that's what's happening. And there's a salamander, a really neat, like, four inch long salamander somewhere in here too. I mean, besides the mice, um, there was a large, most likely a rodent, trying to burrow into my little home here. I guess the first week was all about like getting everything set up. I pumped 15 gallons of water like the first day out here. I like drinking from this stream, you know? I'm drinking from the stream that's running real close to my little place. This is uh, my once a day routine. I I pretty much go through these two a day. Five or six days in, I was like, 
I, my energy totally shifted and I was like, okay, I'm laying down a lot. About a week into it, I had the craziest bow movement I've ever had in my life. It was like an enema. It's exactly what it was like. I feel pretty spoiled, really, honestly, you know? I mean, it's, it's cozy. This is like a luxury hotel in here, you know? <laughs> it really is. I really have gone through a little, like some food cravings just about every day, which has surprised me. I didn't, I didn't anticipate that. Yesterday I smelled a lot like chocolate brownies. Call up Domino's and see if they would deliver out here, you know? <laughs> and then I realized I haven't really been hungry. Whatever store-bought cheap, like chocolate brownies with icing. If I had a big, you know, pepperoni pizza here, right now would I want it? And I was like, no, like the thought repulsed me. What is that? It would be cool to see Domino's deliver out here. First tarp on your right. <laughs> Has nothing to do with what my body wants or needs or anything. It's just like what would make me comfortable. And the second week was like, okay, what am I here to do? Everything that I've been dealing with or even came here out here in the first place to do is just all in my head. I feel done. Um, like that's why I wanted you to bring my journal out because I'm like, I'm glad I didn't have it before now because I would have just been writing, writing, writing. Most of my s struggles, most of my efforts, all that, actually all of it, every, every single aspect of it is just mental. I mean, I feel done like, mentally with what I came here to do. Like I've gotten the answers I needed even though they weren't what I wanted. The trick for me now is to just relax and release and just let in what is rather than how I would like things to be. The chronic joint pain that I've had um, in my wrists has gone away. Uh, I've regained some flexibility and range of motion without the pain that I used to have. My lungs feel bigger and like I can feel my heart pump and it just feels, it just feels vibrant even though I'm just like laying here kind of weak. It, like I just feel a lot more alive. scared the crap out of myself. I just, I was, uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna clean my ears. I looked up in the mirror and I haven't, you know, I've, I had no mirror out there, right? And of course I haven't seen myself since I cut my hair, so that's one thing. I don't think, I mean, I'm back for a couple of reasons I'll explain later, but I don't think I'm ready to eat yet. I left the camp after 16 days. I felt as complete as I had gone in that experience as far as I felt comfortable with. The decision to come back was really motivated by the fact that um, I realized that staying out in the woods by myself is the easy thing for me. It's easy for me to isolate myself. It's easy for me to not be around people because that is kind of what's comfortable to me. And I used to think like so many of my impulses were bad, you know, and then I, I realized like we're all stuck in that situation, you know? And we all have learned these different like systems or ideas of like how we need to be to survive and be loved in the world based on like the experiences we've had in our lives. But because we've all had different experiences, all our ideas are different. When I follow my natural impulse and it upsets somebody else, it's not because I'm bad or flawed, it's because it conflicts with how they feel things need to be for them to survive and be happy. I feel so much freer about food. I don't feel like my 
state of health is dependent on every single meal that I have. Like I know that health comes from within me. So I just have this freedom. I feel free to eat, eat and drink whatever I want without all this judgment around it. I would totally consider doing another fast. I mean, I felt the, I felt healthier than I've ever felt in my whole life, completely cleansed. It was really refreshing. The truth is just present. And now rather than look outside myself for things, it's just knowing how to open up to that within myself. I got a flash of what's possible in life in general for all of us. I mean, I personally, I feel like an explorer in the human experience, you know, but we all are. It's like taking that level of responsibility for my own life, going like, okay, I'm the variable in this experience. So I'm just going to work. Well, these days, um, for the past year, I've been working as a courier, delivering packages, picking up mail. Pretty simple. Um, I work Monday through Friday, very blue collar job. Go work, I go home, play some music, uh, see friends here and there. That's about as mainstream as could be. Toilet paper, Kleenex, drugs. It's funny, funny combination for the day. There's, a, there's certain perks to my job. I like the time to myself driving around. I listen to spiritual seminars I have on CD and it's kind of like my mobile church. That's been really valuable to me. I don't know many jobs that I could listen to a couple hours worth of uh, a spiritual seminar while I'm working and still be doing a good job. So I'm thankful for that. I feel like I've changed a lot since, since this experience. I have a hard time even identifying with the self that I once knew. There actually is an absolute truth and that it can be experienced by any of us. I'm aware that this might sound nutty um, because it would have sounded nutty to me prior to this experience. I saw very clearly that there are absolutely no problems, that any, anywhere in the world there are no problems, like nothing is wrong. and. It's just a perception thing. And like all problems, all sense of things are wrong or injustice or unfair, or it, it's all an internal perception. The truth is ever present. I mean, that's the amazing thing is it's just the degree to which we're open to it. One of the major things that has changed for me is that my whole life prior to this experience, I've tried to find the life I want and make things right by changing things in my environment, to like finding the right job, being around the right people, just a lot of searching, like what's gonna work for me, what, just trying to find the right thing. Now I know that like I'm the variable. As challenging as it's been, I. I wouldn't turn back or change it for anything. I think it just takes the motivation and intention and willingness and just sheer dedication to just unwaveringly know the truth. What we are is, in essence is, is pretty amazing. You are one, you are many. I will gather my courage Dive right in deeper than my fear. 
anything we ever need to know at every single moment in time is just right there. Deeper than my fear Head back and drifting and arms out wide Becoming aware You are deep